So last week, we talked about the Dallas Cowboys defense and the fact that they weren't able to stop the run against the Saints. And one of the reasons why they struggled was because of the run fits just were really, really off. And it's like little things that I feel like just need to be cleaned up. But it's little things that the Cowboys are just making a mistake with. And it's kind of surprising because Mike Zimmer is a good coach. He hasn't really shown these type of things in the past that he couldn't get his guys coached to be able to fill basic run fits. But uh, we're starting to see that. I mean, think about this play here. From a run fit perspective, Parsons here is on the outside. Donovan Wilson over here to the left, which means he's most likely the outside containment in the, in the current run fit here. You got a slot defender who's most likely going to defend this run fit, which would only be needed if you get a down block here on Parsons. But watch what ends up happening. And, and to me, this is stuff where you got to be able to train your guys to be able to see things. So you're going to get a slot wide receiver to go into motion. And when he goes into motion, you see the cornerback follows him. On top of that, you'll see a tight end here is going to wham block towards the, the left of the formation. And then you'll also see safety Donovan Wilson does not follow that. So essentially, you got a cornerback following a slot wide receiver. You got a tight end that's essentially wham blocking towards the left. The safety doesn't follow that way. On top of that, Michael Parsons is going to utilize the spill technique here, right? Which is essentially to go underneath the block as opposed to setting the edge. So with that, someone has to get out there to the outside. And I think it should have been Eric Kendricks, the linebacker. I'll show it to you guys on the uh, other angle, the, the end zone angle here in a second. To me, there's just little things that are off. And you know what's interesting about this play here specifically is... The Baltimore Ravens ran this play twice against the Las Vegas Raiders last week. Both times they got shut down, and they didn't run it after that. But against the Cowboys, they ran it on the first play of the game. This is the first play of the game right here. And because it worked, they came back to it over and over and over again. And Lamar Jackson had a lot of success. And the ground game, generally speaking, had a lot of success. The Baltimore Ravens had 274 yards rushing against the Dallas Cowboys. That's unacceptable. And this is not a light box. This is actually a stacked box by the Dallas Cowboys. Now, keep an eye on Kendricks here and watch him go towards the right side here. And uh, because he does that, that tells me he has outside containment. But uh, you also see he's not able to get out there fast enough. Now, I'm not 100% sure if he was supposed to get all the way to the outside and essentially force Lamar Jackson back to the inside. But I know for a fact Donovan Wilson is not in the, in, in the correct run fit. In fact, if you guys just back this up here, you'll see there's just too many players in the same run fits. Number 90 has outside containment, right? The tight end's going to end up going towards the right. Number 13 has the gap here. Oso Digizua's kind of in that two-eye technique where he's kind of playing the inside shoulder there which means Donovan Wilson off the left side here which gap is he supposed to fill because he's going to end up just going into one of these gaps and uh, essentially they're going to get two guys into one gap to me he should have ran over to the right side here when this tight end whams towards that same side to me Donovan Wilson has to do a better job on this play Kendricks has to do a better job getting you know off off that as well and again that's all assuming that Mike Parsons was supposed to spill to the inside uh, because there's a chance he wasn't supposed to. Now, regardless of that, to me, the Cowboys just have to do a better overall job thing within the run fits, understanding the responsibilities as well. And then missed tackles was a big, big, big part of part of essentially the Dallas Cowboys losing. To me, they had 16 missed tackles that I counted in this game. That's just too many missed tackles. DeMarvin Overshone going to end up missing a tackle on this one. Uh, he could have probably limited this play to about five to six yards if he makes the tackle here. And this is a very difficult play to stop, especially if your defensive end is is doing what you're going to see uh, Demarcus Lawrence do on this one. Lawrence is going to end up coming underneath this, which makes sense, especially since you're going to get the left tackle to pull to the left. Very difficult play to stop here. He's going to pull to the left. It makes sense for the defensive end to follow this, right? He's going to come underneath this. This is actually a good job being able to, uh, to come underneath that. But the thing is, this play is is a read option based play, right? It's, it's essentially based off of what this defensive end is going to end up doing. All right, so Lamar Jackson is going to hand the football off because of the fact that that defensive end crashes downwards. And this play ends up picking up 17 yards on second and seven. But you also get a missed tackle on this one, right? So you got to make the tackle right there to limit how many yards you ultimately pick up. Keep an eye on the safety here. Uh, the fact that the Cowboys got gashed for two big runs on the first three plays of the game. The fourth play goes for 30 yards. And most of that's after the catch, and that's just because of the fact that these guys are so committed to coming downhill to defending the run, right? You're going to get a play action to the right. All the, the guys are flowing towards that side, right? You essentially get eight guys all flowing towards that same side. You get a tight end that ultimately ends up going free. And then essentially on the fifth play of the game, you're going to get a Lamar Jackson touchdown run. Uh, once again, man, it's just the same exact concept. It's the same exact design of that very first play we broke down. 
very similar similar stuff, right? Uh, you're going to get one guy to come down. You're going to get another guy that's not able to stay out there on the run fit. Let's break this play down a little bit. So if you guys keep an eye here, the Dallas Cowboys are not going to be set when the ball is ultimately snapped. Michael Parsons is going out here towards the right. Eric Kendricks is trying to call out the run fits. Uh, he's trying to get his safety lined up as well. He's right, essentially he's telling him to step up. And uh, guys just aren't ready for it. And the Ravens come out here and they quickly snap the ball. And this is all on the first drive. So I understand there's a scripted portion within this. But to me, this is just a bad job, right? You got to be up there. You got to get set. And then more than that, these linebackers got to be a little bit quicker. They got to react a little bit faster. Uh, so you're going to get Kendricks, who's telling Malik Hooker to step up towards the left here. But as soon as the tight end here ends up going down towards the right here to lead block, the linebacker has to be able to follow that. Or if it's not the linebacker, the safety. One of these guys needs to follow it. I'm pretty sure it's the linebacker because of the fact that he's telling his safety to go over there towards the left. So right away, you're going to get one guy that's not going to get out towards that side. Parsons is obviously going to come down towards the running back, which is what he's been taught to do. Which also means Overshaw needs to get up, up here, run through there, and he needs to set the edge, right? He needs to be the force player on this. And he's not, he's not quick enough. He's not fast enough. He doesn't read it fast enough specifically. And that lets the blocker get out in front and ultimately get the edge. The run fits here are just off a little bit. It's just a little slow in terms of processing. And with that, you're going to get a nine yard touchdown. Now, it may be easier to just have Mike Parsons stay out there on the outside. Now, the Raiders last week definitely made the quarterback hand the football off. Uh, if there was the inverted read option, they essentially forced the quarterback to hand it off and they tackled the running back. Uh, this one here is going to be an inverted read option. So you'll see the defense bend is going to end up taking the running back. And this play is going to end up getting stopped. So the Cowboys made that switch pretty quickly. But outside of the run fits early on in the game, there were some issues later on, which we'll talk about here in a second. But there were also a lot of missed tackles. And I think that was another part of this game that ultimately kind of impacted the Cowboys. Uh, you're going to have a play here where Nelson Aguilar is going to break a tackle. And, you know, instead of a five-yard play, Nelson Aguilar takes it 50 more yards. To me, this is a stoppable play. Again, the Cowboys had about 16 missed tackles in this game. You can't have that. You got to be able to make these tackles. You got to be able to make these plays. And uh, the Cowboys have struggled a little bit, especially at that left cornerback spot. I think the Dallas Cowboys need to really figure out who's going to be that starting left corner. You know, the rookie cornerback has had a couple of missed tackles, as you guys see on that one right there. I know they've rotated in some other corners. They got to figure it out because what's happening right now is they're missing tackles. Guys aren't playing within the run fits. Guys aren't getting off blocks and, and making their tackles as they should. You'll see on this one here, uh, Overshone's right there, but he's just not able to make the tackle. A three-yard gain ends up going for 13 yards. And, uh, you know, these aren't things that are not correctable, right? The Cowboys can definitely correct this stuff, but it's all about just going out there and actually doing it. Right? It's about going out there and actually making those tackles, it's about making those plays. It's about, you know, from a scheme perspective, putting your guys in position and those guys essentially executing those plays. You know, some people have talked about Michael Parsons a little bit this season. The thing is, Michael Parsons has been very, very good, but Michael Parsons can't do everything by himself. There's a reason why it takes 11 players to essentially be able to play team defense. Michael Parsons can only do so much, and it's going to come down to all the other players being able to essentially make plays, right? Not miss tackles, be able to get up there and essentially do your job. Uh, basic stuff, right? Defending screens is another thing that the Dallas Cowboys struggled with. And again, it's all about just feeling it out and being able to ultimately get there, all right? It's just a little too slow right now for the Dallas Cowboys on the defensive side. At the end of the day, the Dallas Cowboys got to get their guys to ultimately step up and make plays. Uh, little things, right, also need to be cleaned up. Now, I'm not sure if this is a scheme thing, but allowing Lamar Jackson to get out of the pocket is not good business, right? To me, if a guy's going to slant towards the inside, and again, you know, Mike Zimmer has been proven to be a good coach. So I find it hard to believe that he's going to have his defensive end slant to the inside on a second and seven. And that slant to the inside is not followed up by a, you know, another guy essentially coming to the outside, right? I find it hard to believe Carlos Watkins here should not have come super far towards the left here, right? To keep Lamar Jackson in the pocket. You can't let this guy get out of the pocket. He's going to kill you. And he throws a 13 yard touchdown on this one to Rashad Bateman. Little things got to be cleaned up. And again, I'm not sure if this is a scheme issue or if this is just guys aren't following the directions of what they're being told. Maybe they're a little confused on on how to, you know, potentially take these these plays here and be able to kind of keep Lamar Jackson within the pocket. And just coming back to run fits, uh, you got to do a better job. I don't know what Donovan Wilson's thinking on this one. 
but you're going to give up 29 yards because this guy jumps to the inside. Again, I'm not 100% sure what it is. You also got a ton of missed tackles on this one. You got to do something on this one. And again, you know, it doesn't make sense that Wilson jumps to the inside. That doesn't make sense at all to me. And uh, Derrick Henry obviously makes uh, two guys miss on this one. And the rookie gets a welcome to the NFL moment. You know, again, it just comes down to basic stuff. Donovan Wilson has to stay inside this gap here, right? There's no reason for him not to jump the B gap and for some reason to go to the inside. That just doesn't make sense. This is basic, basic stuff. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I've learned over the past two to three years is guys are a lot better in certain schemes than other schemes. And uh, Donovan Wilson is not built for Zimmer's scheme. And, you know, maybe this is just some criticism and hopefully he gets better as we kind of go forward. But Donovan Wilson was so much better in the Dan Quinn scheme than he is in, in this scheme here. Right. Missed tackles. Unable to stay in the run fit and just doing the very, very basic stuff you need out of your your safeties. It's just unacceptable, you know, and you see this one here. Once again, he's going to end up missing the tackle. I I, I understand Eric Henry is a hard player to tackle, but you also get paid as an NFL safety, right? You make these plays right here. You limit a, a play that probably shouldn't go for 26 yards to about four to five. Instead, you know, 20 more yards after you miss this tackle. Another thing is, is you're going to see Mozzie Smith's going to end up getting double teamed. He's going to get tossed out of there. You got to do a better job if you're Mozzie Smith, obviously being able to hold the gap. It's just bad football right now by the Dallas Cowboys, right? Guys just got to be able to play better. You got to be able to step up. You got to be able to make plays. And another thing to note with the Cowboys is it is still technically a young defense, right? At, at its core. You know, Oso Digizio, I believe this is his fourth year. Mozzie Smith's second year. D-tackles generally take, you know, three, four years to really develop. You got a rookie linebacker in Leofow that plays a lot. You got a, essentially a rookie linebacker in DeMarvin Overshone. I know he's not technically a rookie, but this is essentially his first year playing as, as a starting linebacker in the NFL. Marshawn Nealon's a rookie, right? So you got a lot of young players trying to learn the NFL speed. They're trying to get used to that. You got a rookie corner starting. There's going to be ups and downs. And that too, it's Mike Zimmer with the whole new scheme and system. It's going to take time. I'm not surprised that the Dallas Cowboys are struggling sometimes on the defensive side. But there's just a lot of issues right now with the Cowboys. The best way to clean it up, I think, is really going to be to, to play a heavy box, right? Stack the box with a ton of people. Force teams to beat you over the top. Force quarterbacks to actually beat you, right? Because I think that's the best way for the Dallas Cowboys right now. Alrighty, guys, before we end this video, uh, I want to talk about the final drive that the Dallas Cowboys were on the defensive side. They weren't able to get off the field. You know, the score was 28 to 25. There were about two minutes and 45 seconds left in the fourth quarter. The Cowboys did do a pretty good job on the first two plays. Uh, this one's going to end up picking up four yards. The quarterback does keep the ball. Now, keep in mind, it's an inverted read option, right? So the running back's going to run towards the outside. And Michael Parsons is going to take that, right? This is the right way to do it, right? This is what we talked about earlier. Uh, force the run to the inside. So you picked up four yards on that one. They're going to run another play here. And uh, they're going to end up being able to stop this one as well. This one's going to end up picking up nothing. And again, keep in mind, they're going to run a read option once again. And you're going to force the run to the inside. This is a regular read option. So Michael Parsons here has to set the edge. And you want to force the handoff to the running back towards the inside on this one. That's exactly what he does, right? He sets the edge. He stays out there. Quarterback hands the ball. They make the play. This one picks up nothing. And then they end up getting beat on third and six for nine yards. Again, it's just, you know, you got to go out there and you just got to do your thing, right? You got to make the play. Now, this one's going to be Trayvon Diggs. Now, I will say this with this play. You know, are you guys going to play one-on-one, -on -one, man to man or are you going to play a match style of defense? You know, because generally speaking, when you have... A three on three situation like this. You know, one guy will take the guy that crosses, one guy will take the guy that goes out, one guy will take the guy that essentially goes deep. And on this one, that's not what's gonna end up happening. And you'll almost see Trayvon Diggs and Carson kind of run into each other at the top of this. Uh again, this is just a scheme approach of how you guys you know since you want to handle this. I think it's handled the wrong way, in my personal opinion. Third and six, you're gonna give up nine yards. And uh, this one, I think, basically ended the game, although they did have to pick up one more first to really ice the clock out. But you go with the cover one, man-to-man -man defense, you know, the team needs six yards. And the fact that Trayvon Diggs has to go over the top of Carson, the rookie corner here, it's just too much space, you know. And uh, Lamar Jackson will be able to hit, hit Zay Flowers on this one. They're going to pick up the first down. 
you still do got to pick up a first down if you're the Ravens at least one more time because of the two minute warning. The first one that they're going to end up calling is only going to go for one yard. They run un inside zone. Great job here being able to shut it down. And then they're going to end up making a mistake here. Second and nine, Lamar Jackson's going to keep it. He's going to hit for 10 yards. Now, I shouldn't even say they're going to make a mistake. That's probably not the right thing to say on this one. Uh, they do cover this perfectly, honestly. You see Donovan Wilson come downhill. He takes the, the wide receiver coming across. Eric Kendricks gets over the top. But uh, you'll see DeMarvin Overshone's not going to be able to, to fill the backside. And again, this is not a knock on Overshone, right? He almost gets there. He's just not able to. Uh, you all see the guy that's going to cut him off. I think it's uh, Mark Andrews here. He's going to end up shooting the hell out of there, right? Uh, or it might be there. Actually, it is. It is the tight end. And he's able to get in front of Overshone just enough. So that's a good job right there. And, uh, you know, again, you needed nine yards. You pick up 10 yards on second and nine. It's just little things that need to be cleaned up, right? And I think the Dallas Cowboys will be able to clean it up. You know, it's not the end of the world. You got to recognize the Cowboys are young across the board. Overshone, Smith, Osa are all on rookie contracts. Uh, Leo Fowl's a rookie. And he plays a lot of snaps. You have a rookie cornerback starting. You have safeties that are playing in a new scheme and system. Right, these guys are learning. They're developing. They're getting better and better. And I think they will be able to get to a point, maybe in two or three weeks, where they're 100 percent comfortable with the scheme. And I think the Dallas Cowboys will bounce back. There's still a lot of talent on the defensive side. It's just about being able to come together and pull out some of these wins that they could ultimately win. And of course, the offense has to do their part. In this game, it was just a little too late for that for the offense, right? But it's not a big deal. You know, you're playing the Baltimore Ravens. This is a playoff caliber team. The Saints are probably a playoff caliber team, regardless of the fact that the Eagles ended up beating them. And really, Big Fangio putting it out there on paper of how to stop that offense. But the Cowboys are not out of the playoffs, right? There's still four months of football left. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing. We are covering the Dallas Cowboys. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.